Hi, I'm Kelly. And I'm Joey. And today we're going to show you how to perform an actual stick of a phlebotomy draw. Phlebotomy is the practice of letting blood from a vein in order to perform diagnostic tests or for therapeutic reasons. Previously, Heather and Shania showed you how to prepare a caddy, what equipment to gather and what each one does, and what PPE or personal protective equipment to use. They also showed you how to identify your patient and how to obtain implied and written consent. Before performing your actual blood draw, you need to make sure that you have identified yourself as the phlebotomist to your patient, made sure that you have the correct patient, and obtained consent from your patient. The first thing you'll do is make sure you have your PPE on, which in this case will just be our gloves, as we do not expect to have any splattering of blood. After you have identified your patient, you will want to ask if they have a preference of arms or if they have any medical reason that you cannot draw off of one of their arms. Next, you will make sure that your patient's arm is in a sublimated position and that the inner elbow is exposed and straightened. Before applying your tourniquet, you will want to connect your needle to your hub and throw away any excess plastic that you remove from your needle. After preparing your needle, you'll want to apply the tourniquet to your patient's upper arm, leaving one of the tails so that you can readily remove the tourniquet when you need to. After applying the tourniquet, you will palpate to figure out which vein you will use. The most used vein is the median cubital. After locating the vein you want to use, you will open your alcohol wipe and disinfect the area, starting from the inside and making a circular motion towards the outside. You will have to wait until it is completely dry so that you do not mess up any diagnostic tests that you use the blood for. Do not blow in the area as you do not want to break the sterile field. When the alcohol is dry, you will push back the safety part and remove the cap from the needle. You then need to inspect your needle to make sure that there are no imperfections and that you insert the needle bevel up. To keep the vein from rolling, anchor it before inserting the needle. Next, insert the vacutainer Allow the vacutainer to fill completely. Remove the tourniquet. Then remove your vacutainer. Apply gauze onto the needle, but do not use pressure. Remove the needle, clip the safety, and put it in a sharp spin. Continue to apply pressure to the site until bleeding has stopped. This should take several minutes. Failure to do so will result in hematomas. After holding pressure, you should apply a Band-Aid or self-adhering wrap to the site so that pressure is continued for a longer amount of time. Before allowing the patient to leave, you need to make sure that you obtain their information and write it on the vacutainer. This will include their name, their date of birth, their physician, the time of the draw, the date, and your initials. Then the vacutainer will get sent to the laboratory for testing. 
You will need to make sure that you remove your gloves. Dispose of them properly and wash your hands again. Before every blood draw, a phlebotomist must properly wash their hands following the CDC guideline mentioned in the hand washing video. First, you're going to ask the patient if she has a preferred arm. Do you have a preferred arm? My left one. Okay, then you will tell the patient to roll up their sleeve or you will do it for them. Could you roll up your sleeve, please? Is that okay? A little bit more, please. Thank you. Then you will ask the patient or move their hand to put their arm in a supplementary position to where their vein is facing up. Next, you will acquire your tourniquet and apply it. If the patient is wearing long sleeves, such as the patient here, you can put the tourniquet over. Also, if the patient has a latex allergy, you can put it over their sleeve. Make sure to ask the patient if the tourniquet is too tight. Is it too tight? No. All right. As you can see here, her veins are very palpable, so you will not need to squeeze anything to bring them to the surface. Next, clean the site using a circular motion. Then flip up the safety cap and take off the lid. Inspect your needle to make sure there are no imperfections and make sure the bevel is up. Then anchor the vein. Insert the vacuum tanner. Remove the tourniquet and remove the vacuum tube. Apply the gauze without putting pressure and take the needle out. Flip the, the safety cap so you don't infect anyone. Apply pressure to the site to avoid hematomas. You can ask the patient to hold the gauze while you get a band-aid or a wrap. Can you hold the gauze please? Now you can ask the patient if they have an adhesive allergy. If so, you can use a wrap. In this case, this patient does have an adhesive allergy, so we will use the self-adhering wrap. You can fold the gauze to make it easier to apply the wrap. Make sure that when you are wrapping the arm, you do not wrap it too tight as it can cut off circulation. Could you lift up your arm, please? Is it too tight? No. Using your scissors, cut the wrap. No. Last, you will gather the patient's information to write on the vacuum tanner. May I have your date of birth? February 11, 2001. Your name? Joey Zerman. Could you spell it for me? J O E Y. Z-I-M-M-E-R-M-A-N. Then you will write down the date and time, the physician's name, and your initials. Then you can send it to the laboratory for testing, but in this case, we will put it in the biohazardous sharps container.